My name is John Passfield, and the title of this reading will be L. M. Montgomery, Video 25, Dream Nightmares 1, Part 1. So here is my novel, L. M. L. M. Sorry, Montgomery, I Gave You Life, a novel by John Passfield. Here's the summary on the back cover. In 1938, with another world war looming and her own personal problems threatening to overwhelm her, Acclaimed Canadian author Ella Montgomery begins to write what she has decided will be her final Anne novel. As she works on the new book, she recalls the days when Anne of Green Gables became a worldwide literary phenomenon and the dilemma that she faced at that time. Whether to write a series of novels in which Anne would perpetually remain the child the world had come to know and love, or to allow Anne to grow to adulthood with all the agonizing torments of the one who had given her life, L. M. Montgomery. Now, we're keeping three novels in mind. The one I just held up, Ella Montgomery, in which she is a character. In my novel, she is a character who is writing her new and latest, she has decided, her new and latest, but her final, she has decided, Anne novel. A novel with Anne as a character, Anne of Ingleside. This is 1938. Now, as she's writing, she quite naturally thinks of the very first Anne novel, the first novel with Anne as a character, Anne of Green Gables, which she wrote in 1905, which is 33 years earlier, okay? 1938, 1905. So two books. The one she's writing now, 1938. The one she's thinking of, Anna Green Gables, 1905. Now, I don't know you, of course, but I wouldn't hesitate to say to you that I think that the most interesting person that you will ever meet in your lifetime is you, you yourself. And the reason that I say so is because the most interesting relationship that a person has during his or her lifetime is with the self. We are told that the human brain is one of the largely unexplored elements of the human experience, and I can believe it. One of the most fascinating things about literature is that a work of fiction is a device which is designed for the exploration of the human mind. One of the literary devices that I use in my poetic novels and poetic novellas is that of the dream nightmare, dream hyphen nightmare. Sometimes you don't know what it is till you've thought about it, and sometimes you still don't know. Was it a dream, positive, or a nightmare, negative? Dream hyphen nightmare, a little bit of both. There are seven dream nightmares in this novel. Dream nightmares of L. M. Montgomery, the main character. And in this video presentation, I'll read three of those dream nightmares. So we go to page uh, 10 of chapter 2 first. Let me find it. Okay, here it is. So it's in three parts. Three times during this chapter, this nightmare surfaces in the thoughts of the main character. I'm a household fly. I'm swimming in an ocean. An ocean of pitch dark ink. The ocean of ink has walls of glass. I cannot fly for the weight of the ink on my body and my wings. I cannot climb out for the glass is too slippery to climb. I swim around and flap my wings. I try not to imbibe any ink. Suddenly, I am plucked up by the wings. Okay, that's the first installment. A little later, this surfaces again, this, this dream nightmare. I am placed on a blotter. I sink on the whitened swath. The ink on my body drags me down. I cannot walk nor fly. I determine that I shall live. I move my legs and scrape the ink away as best I possibly can. I shake my wings and the drops of ink fall on the blotter. I clean myself for what seems like hours and hours. I'm almost ready to fly when suddenly I'm plucked up by my wings. Then we go a page or so a little further for the third installment of this dream nightmare in the mind of the main character. 
in the inkwell, almost drowning, swimming round and round in the ink. My body and wings are heavily laden. The glass walls are impossible to climb. Plucked out and dropped on the blotter, I start to clean myself again. But then, up and into the ink and plucked out again. I am exhausted. My strength is depleted, swimming for life and then cleaning again. This is testing me to my limits. What a fiend my tormentor must be. I am dying of extreme exhaustion, but I shall clean and clean and clean. I shall struggle against my tormentor as long as I can. Well, sometimes our dreams, <clears throat> or perhaps a nightmare in this case, uh, is an echo of what we think our daily lives to be. And of course, this isn't a dream nightmare in the mind of L. M. Montgomery, Montgomery, the main character in the novel. But I'll just leave it at that and move on to the next one. Here's the next one. It's chapter 4, page 26. How did I get into this dream? I'm living in a town where a family's dog gets poisoned. I'm living in a town where a mother slaps a child's face for every little thing. I'm living in a town where a person can be buried alive. How did I get into this dream? A second installment, a little later. How did I get into this dream? I'm living in a town where boys torture miserable, scrawny cats. I'm living in a town where a badly burned baby is rushed to the hospital. I'm living in a town where children tell other children vicious lies. How do I get out of this dream? Uh, we think of Ella Montgomery as a writer of cheerful, happy novels. These are all images from a novel of Ella Montgomery. They were all images in the mind of Ella Montgomery because she was the writer of the novel. How did I get into this dream? I'm living in a town where a little boy can drown in a rainwater hogshead. I'm living in a town where a person can die of a disease barely known to the world. I'm living in a town where children grow up to be adults. How do I get out of this dream? Uh, then we go to chapter 6, page uh, 42, for a third dream, the third dream I'm going to read in this presentation. I'm all alone at the circus. The crowds have left and the music is gone. Sawdust and tinsel cover the floor of the pony ring. Now the bleachers all sit empty. In my ears, there's faint applause. Where's everybody gone? High wire swaying far above me, smells of sweat and liniment. Just when feeling most alone, I hear a low growl. A little later, the surfaces again in her thoughts. All alone beneath the big top, a cage with metal bars, a cage with growling, angry beasts, lions, tigers, leopards. One is pawing at the door. The door swings out and stops. The jar. I look around but find no keeper. He forgot to lock the cage. The pin is lying 15 feet away. And then a little later in her mind, this dream nightmare surfaces again. I rush over and close the door of the cage. The panther growls and snarls and frets. His fellows all let out a mighty roar. I hold the door with one hand shut. The music starts, the trumpets blare, a miniature parade comes into view. It's the story of my life. Out of order, topsy-turvy, upside down. My fingers tighten on the door. The beasts are snarling in the cage. The panther's claws slash at my fingers. I squeeze the door with my bleeding hand. With the other, I reach down. I hold the door of the cage as I stretch and strain. With one hand, I try to rearrange my life. So what a dream hyphen nightmare. Um, holding the door 
of a cage with angry animals inside with one of them slashing at one's hand. In the meantime, the prey to one's life goes by. It's out of order. It's topsy-turvy, trying with the other hand to correct the prey of one's life so the record will be accurate. Anyway, those are the dream nightmares of the character L.M. Montgomery in this novel. Some of them. I'll read some more in another video. We all have dreams and nightmares. We only become aware of them when we wake up in the middle of one or at the tail end of one. And most of us forget them fairly soon after we wake up. Very few of us even record them at all. What I can say about the dream nightmares of this novel is that all of them were taken from the historical life of the main character, L.M. Montgomery. She was a real person. She kept records. She recorded her dreams. Now, they're all written in my own words, the words of myself, John Passfield, the author. There are hints of all of them in the biographies and the diaries of the historical person L. M. Montgomery. I chose to write about L. M. Montgomery because she's both typical and unique. She's typical because the imagery that operates below the surface of her mind that creates itself and forms itself into patterns is common to every human being on earth. She, like everyone else, had dreams, had nightmares. She's unique, though, uh, in that people have written about her and have called potential imagery from her letters and other writings, and she has written about herself in her journal. So unlike most of us, there's a record of these dreams hyphen nightmares. In the case of ourselves, our dreams and nightmares take place silently when we are asleep and are often are not known consciously about or are soon forgotten. In the case of others whom we know, there's often no mention of dreams or nightmares. But in the case of a famous person, in particular a famous person who's a writer, there's information which allows a writer such as myself to turn it into imagery in order to explore what it is to be a typical human being. So this goes on in the minds of all of us. It's more dramatic and it's more available, you might say, when it's in the mind of a famous person who kept records. So uh, this is my novel, L. M. Montgomery, I Gave You Life, a novel by John Passport. It's found on Amazon, if you're interested, there's more information there. It's found on my uh, publisher's website, rocksmillspress.com where there's more information. On my website, there's two free books. The planning notebook, which I kept while I was planning and writing this novel. The journal of reflection, which I wrote while I was polishing this novel. So if you're interested at all, have a look at johnpassfield.ca, which is my website. Lastly, thank you for watching this video.